So how does Sean Moore develop the central idea of the little owls that live underground? In this lesson, you will determine how a central idea is developed by listing the details that validate the author's central idea. So let's review. We read the little owls that live underground, and the author is John Warren. It's an informational text. It's a piece of nonfiction, um, and we would classify this as an article. It was published on Smithsonian.com. Um, throughout this text, Moore uses a lot of different pieces of evidence, facts, stories, or anecdotes, interviews to convey his message about burrowing owls. Um, and so we know that good readers determine the central idea. That's really important. What is the text mostly about? But then after we do that, we have a couple choices. First, we can just like list the details um, that support that central idea, and that's eh, okay. But what good readers do is they look for clear evidence that validates the central idea. And when I say validate, I mean that that backs it up, that makes it grow bigger and stronger. And so today we're going to focus on this, looking for clear evidence that really enforces or really builds, really strengthens our central idea. Not just facts, but things that make our central idea better. So in order to do that, we're going to follow three steps. First, we're going to ask, what is the central idea of the text? Next, I'm going to determine the five W's and the funky H of the central idea. Finally, I'm going to ask which details strengthen my central idea and how. So the five W's and the one funky H, let's start there. So the five W's are who, what, when, where, and why. Our funky H, how. These are the things that support our central idea. Who, what, when, where, why, five W's, plus one funky H, how. So first we have to ask what is the central idea. So looking at my title and my blurb, burrowing owls can thrive amid agricultural development and urbanization, so why are they imperiled? Right, right there I have my central idea. So the central idea is that burrowing owls are unique creatures whose environment and livelihood can and should be protected, right? He says they can thrive. Um, he calls them these little owls. We see that they're interesting, and he's saying, why are they endangered? This is a problem. It shouldn't be. So I can say that my central idea is that they're unique. Their livelihood can and should be protected. So now I need to ask what details validate that. And I'm going to start with who. So who? Um, and I have this, this the text from the beginning here, and it's about a biologist, and his name is Jack Barclay. So we also see that he is doing all of these studies to try to protect the owl. So I know that Jack Barclay is this conservationist who bans these owls, and he's not alone in his work. Throughout the text, we also see that there are other scientists and other local residents, like Scott Artis, that are really trying to protect the owl. Now I'm going to ask what? What is the problem? Um, what can we do? So here in my text, it says that burrowing owls are an abundant, imperiled species. Um, so abundant imperiled means that, well, they're facing relocation and habitat destruction. Um, and so my problem is that they're imperiled, right? Even though they're still around, they're they're endangered. And so and so what what the problem is is that they are endangered and we need to figure out what to do. Next, we're gonna ask when. When is this problem occurring? And right here, um, right at the top, I see where my article was published and when. So it was published in 2010, so I know that it's a current problem, right? It's 2013, so it was published three years ago. Um, but if we look deeper in the text, we see that it's been going on for years. I mean, at least since the 1980s. Um, so it's been a problem for a while. This idea of habitat destruction, they can be saved, can we save them, will we save them? So next I'm going to ask where. Where is this a problem, right? In recent decades, agricultural development and urbanization have spread across western North America. The once numerous burrowing owl has declined in vast areas of the Great Plains in Canada. That's a huge amount of area, right? Um, they can and do live throughout North America. And then to take it even more specific, we see that close areas that are near people. So airports or landfills are also um, key targets. So they're frequently competing with developers um, near near 
airports, near, near landfills, in order um, to try to get their habitat. Finally, why? Why is this a problem? Why does it matter? So part of the problem is that the owl's preferred habitat, very short grasses with burrowing mammals, is exactly the kind of land that is often slated for development. When developers plow or mow weeds to reduce the fire hazard in areas they plan to eventually build on, they can inadvertently attract burrowing owls and later provoke battles with conservationists. So again, why is this a problem? Because they're competing with developers for habitat. As well, we see that they're really fighting with, um, with the law. Um, under the complicated and sometimes confusing regulations that govern the owl, unless the nest is active, a developer can relocate or evict the birds. Artis, a local resident, mounted a campaign to bring attention to the owl's plight, right? So they're facing these relocation habitat destruction issues because the law is unclear. And so they can really just be destroyed, which has led to them being imperiled. Finally, how, my funky H, um, how is this happening? Um, how can we solve it, right? We said our central idea is that they can and should be safe. So the question, how can we, how should we? Um, here's one suggesti suggestion. Um, using a valve box that's roughly the size of a toaster oven, the bottomless molded plastic valve box allows for the natural earthen floor while the removable top provides easy access for biologists to monitor the birds. So we can build them bird houses. Um, is one solution, one way how they can thrive. Another way they can thrive is by allowing them to live in areas like landfills and airports and golf courses instead of trying to evict them or build over them, making those spaces shared. Um, and they just need developers to agree, right? Like they just need developers to help them out to make this happen. So now I have to ask which details really support my central idea, right? And so my central idea is that burrowing owls are unique creatures whose environment and livelihood can and should be protected. So now I have to zoom in on which of my five W's and funky H really build up that idea, right? Which ones make the case stronger that they're special and that they can and should be saved. So which details support my central idea? That's still my question. Here's my central idea again. First of all, my what details, right? What is the problem, right? I need to say that, that there is a problem that they are unique. So this piece about what that they're an abundant imperiled species is really key. I need to identify that there is a problem to strengthen my central idea. Why? Why is there a problem? The why is really key, right? We need to understand why there is an issue. Why? Because of habitat destruction. So what this unique species has become imperiled. Why? Because of habitat destruction. And finally, we need to talk about how, right? A huge part of the central idea is that their livelihood can and should be protected. So we need to answer that question, how? Um, and we see that um, birds can thrive in urban settings and those solutions. So let's return to our question. How does John Moore develop the central idea in the little owls that live underground? Let's write it out. In the little owls that live underground, John Moyer develops his central idea that burrowing owls can and should be saved by providing a wealth of diverse evidence. Moyer argues that because the owls are imperiled, we must take action to save them. He then gives his reader the reason why they should be saved, explaining that they are unique and interesting. Finally, Moyer gives multiple perspectives on how the owl can be practically and easily saved, right? Again, putting all those pieces together to fully answer my question. In order to do that, we followed these three steps. Ask what is the central idea of the text? Two, Determine the details that develop the central idea by finding the five W's and the one funky H. And finally, ask which de ideas develop my central idea and how. In this lesson, you have determined how a central idea is developed by listing details that validate the author's central idea.